Chuck Todd and Steve Kornacki at the big board together talking about the path forward. It's like an eclipse. Exactly. You know, you don't get it very often, <laughs> but when you get it, uh, you'll, you'll appreciate Just as exciting. It. So, look, we've put our brains together to basically talk about the path ahead. Obviously, for Nikki Haley, it has to be a formula of of primaries that allow independents and yes even democrats here and so we this is everything through super tuesday through the first that first tuesday in march so you can see where she'll start to put her resources you know she's going to put her resources obviously in everything here in yellow and realistically look to me michigan minnesota is a good place for her colorado could be in those i think these southern states while they're open are probably not great territory for her but realistic and maybe she does well here in the rest of New England, is there. But I know, Steve, you did some crunching uh, as well on this state by state. Yeah, I mean, just looking at, obviously, the reliance she had on independents and Democrats. That were, according to the exit poll right now, 49% of this Republican electorate, of this uh, Republican primary electorate is actually Republican. So just looking back at 2016, some of these states you're talking about, what share of the electorate was Republican yep. in those primaries here? 62, 69, 60. Massachusetts, you're mentioning. Okay. That, could, well, there's that one. could be a Haley yeah. target. You know, <laughs> 69, 83, 63, 70. Vermont, 57. Well, that's a different kind of Republican. I think right. she could be competitive there. Virginia at 55. But, you know, Chuck, the other factor here is this is a two-person race now. Yep. In a lot of these states, the formula is very simple for delegates. If you get 50% in a congressional district, you get all from the district. You change the rules in some of these places California. to pull this off, and California is obviously yeah. the big one. Winner take all if you get 50% yeah. plus one. So he doesn't even, he could beat her by two points and take <laughs> all the delegates in a bunch of these states. You know, the Democratic primary tonight did draw about 100 plus thousand voters. There are some places that if there's no competitive Democratic primary and Democrats can participate, that could in theory help her. I think it cost her some votes tonight. I think Dean Phillips's ad campaign and the successful right and effort with Biden cost her some opportunity. Tonight. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, six percent in the exit poll IDing as Democrats, it's usually two percent or something. Well, no, it was double digits, though, in 12 and in eight. Yeah, it was only single digits when Bernie Sanders was the Democrat on the other side in 2016. Yeah. So that's why there was an opportunity here, but more Democrats stayed in their lane. I know in South, you know, in South Carolina, they don't do party registration, so we're just at the reliance of what they say in the exit poll, but I know the high water mark for Democrats there was McCain in 2009. Yep. Independent was 30. They got 40% non-Republican electorate in in and If uh, I recall, 2000. McCain still couldn't get 50%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a really tough place yeah. for him. Uh, and he's essentially the Nikki Haley candidate. Well, the, the Bush message in 2000, is it was a more refined version of what you heard from Trump tonight, which is essentially, this is a loyalty test. Yeah. Don't side with the Democrats, don't side with the independents, don't side with the media. And remember, 70, Donald Trump won a majority of the Republicans. John McCain actually won a plurality of Republicans in New Hampshire. Mm. Right. So you could, he could actually lay claim that some Republicans wanted him. She's got a problem when only one in four Republicans in New Hampshire wanted her as the nominee. So to win the independent vote, by 44, by a, a 34, a 20, me, 24 in the independents, and to lose the Republicans by 49 is a 73 point swing. I look back, there is no New Hampshire primary where there's ever been that big of a swing. And, and guys, just to put a fine point on it, in terms of the number of Republicans in New Hampshire, we're looking at double the amount when you get to South Carolina, when you get to Michigan. And that's why her path gets so much harder. Yeah, hey, look, that's why it's all about, you know, in the old days, you'd say, you want to collect delegates because you want to influence the platform and you want to do all these things. To me, the only motivation for her to stick this out is if she wants to be the leader of a party that doesn't have Donald Trump involved. If she somehow believes yeah. that Trump loses and that there will be room and she'll look, it was the bet Ted Cruz made and lost in 2016. I don't know if that's who she is, though. I just mm. don't. Given that she served in the administration and seemed to make the other calculation last time. No, I agree. And the other number on South Carolina, too. Look, 76% uh, Republican in 2016. It was also 72% evangelical yeah. in 2016. Tonight in New Hampshire, 19%. Iowa was 55. And again, that's the backbone of Trump right now. He's formed that political bond. By the way, this map proves only Massachusetts is less Republican, right, of a Republican primary yes. than New Hampshire. Yes. Only Massachusetts, the neighboring state. Maybe the D.C. primary. Yeah. Right? I mean, again, McCain, he yeah. swept New England pretty much uh, and lost almost everywhere else. And if you remember in 2016, I believe it Marco Rubio Marco was the Rubio, president of Virginia. He, that's right. Virginia. Can, can, and Minnesota I, was close. can I jump in? Because one of the states that Nikki Haley's campaign is looking at is Virginia, Massachusetts, Virginia. What would the path be in a Virginia? Oh, it's quite easy. Virginia is not. Look, Virginia, we saw this. Virginia is allergic to, to Trump. 
So, I mean, it is the it is literally the path. We can actually, why don't we not give a history here, right? We can we can go back into time here and show you what happened here in Virginia, I believe. Right? Go yeah, ahead there. 2016. 2016. Get over there it is. Virginia, and we can get. And and in fact, so this was the path. You can see it here. Look, there's Washington D.C. Yep. There's all the Rubio counties, and he it's won all of Richmond. You could see where basically it's wherever Democrats carry in Virginia. Rubio did well. And by the way, though, he still came up short. Mm. And, and this That's is, the irony here. He well, still came up short. Well, we're on this. I got to point this one out. Okay. The <laughs> D.C. primary, a combined 72, almost 73 percent from Marco Rubio, John Kasich. There will be 19 delegates mm. in D.C. So this one, yeah. I could see Haley getting delegates from. The problem is she, it's, she's got to follow a Democratic right. path to win a Republican nomination. Wherever Democrats do well in general elections is where she has to go and figure this out. That's no way to win a nomination. And that has been the challenge ever since we started delving into New Hampshire. This was more interesting than an eclipse. Thank you, there Chuck you, and Steve. Wait a minute. Eclipses are also very interesting. <laughs> no one went blind staring at this. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really, very you know. interesting. But <laughs> yeah. this, I think this tops it. All right. Thank you both. Very Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.